what it was like to be poor in every time period. You guys absolutely loved my video about being rich in every time period, so I thought I'd cover the opposite. Let's begin. The Stone Age. The Stone Age is actually quite interesting when it comes to poverty, simply because some would argue that it really wasn't a thing, at least not in the way that we consider it to be now. In the Stone Age, hunter and gatherer tribes were not uncommon, and these tribes often had little to no material possessions as they were nomadic, meaning that they lived off the land and traveled where the land was abundant. For a majority of this time, the richness of individuals in the Stone Age came from the land that they inhabited, meaning that if you were in a lush, fruitful area, you were wealthy. If you had access to water, a safe place to live, some sort of shelter, and access to wild animals, you were rich. This also meant that the opposite was true. If the land that you were living in had no access to water, shelter was sparse, you were exposed and vulnerable to predators and the elements, and food was hard to come by, you were poor very poor, dangerously poor. In the Stone Age, poverty was a life or death situation because your wealth was your livelihood. Your wealth was food, shelter, and water, the essentials to life. With that being said, in the Stone Age, these humans were extremely in tune with nature and they were skilled at finding lush lands. And typically tribes had roots that they would follow during different seasons or different times of the year. They would follow the migrations of animals and also follow water. This brings me back to my original point. Did poverty not exist in the Stone Age? I don't think so but it definitely was different. And what it looked like to be poor in the Stone Age was basically living off of land that provided nothing for you. The soil was dry and barren. There was no water to be found. There was no shelter. Animals were hard to come by. And no matter where you looked or traveled, you could not find suitable land. And like I mentioned in the first video, being rich in every time period, the Stone Age did heavily depend on the group that you were in. So let's say your tribe abandoned you in this land that was not fruitful. Then you'd be really poor, aka dead. The Bronze Age. No, just kidding. Like I mentioned in the last video, the Bronze Age is where massive technological advancements started to take place, specifically the introduction of bronze, which is an alloy made of 88% copper and 12% tin, which is why we're showing copper on screen. During the Bronze Age, wealth was associated with the production and the control of bronze, the knowledge of being able to craft tools out of bronze, and also becoming active in trade with the bronze creations that you're making, whether they be tools, weapons, or ornaments. Societies were growing, and that meant trade was growing, and social status also also started to show itself. Now with this being said, what did it look like to be poor in the Bronze Age? Well, for starters, obviously you had no knowledge of tool creation whatsoever. You couldn't make a tool if you tried. You had absolutely no access to bronze or any sort of copper or tin deposits. You were not engaged in trade whatsoever, and you simply lived off of your own goods. Now this actually brings me to an interesting point that I want to make, because it's important that we understand poverty within its cultural and historical context. What I mean by this is, sure, it's easy from us with the modern day perspective to look at somebody without resources or access to advanced tools or trade to be considered poor. But if we look at the context of the time, it is really not uncommon to be completely self-sufficient. And that was for the most part, a way of life. Everyone made their own food, tended to their own farm, raised their own livestock. And being self-sufficient wasn't an option. It was a necessity. Although someone may appear to be impoverished because they don't have access to bronze during the bronze age, you could still live a great life. If you were self-sufficient, built your own home, lived in a nice area, either near or or far from society. It's just an interesting point because what we would potentially consider being poor, somebody with no access to advanced technologies or trade, was actually more than fine. The people that we may label as poor in this time were doing completely fine and potentially even happier. Now, with that being said, if this person was really poor, and I mean really, really poor, they didn't have anything at all. Meaning that not only did they have no tools, no skills, no access to bronze, they also didn't have any skills to make their own home. They didn't have a shelter to call their own. They couldn't live off of the land for whatever reason. And these people likely lived off of others and likely didn't live long either. At this point in time, being self-sufficient was very much a way of life. And if you couldn't take care of yourself, you weren't living long. The Iron Age. The Iron Age picks up where the Bronze Age left off, but with a new metal, iron. Iron was more readily available and also easier to forge and work with. Iron tools, weapons, and armor became the norm. And like the Bronze Age, association with the production, mining, and forging of this metal caused significant wealth, especially when paired with trade. Oh yeah, and in the Iron Age, trade, civilization, social class, and other factors 
all began to scale as well. Civilization was really starting to hit a stride here. And with this continued growth and scale of society, we saw the beginning of economics, employment, and a bit of what we would consider to be modern poverty. Being poor in the Iron Age typically meant you worked hard labor. You had basic living conditions and struggled to survive. Poor people in the Iron Age typically lived in simple, cramped huts made from wood, thatch, and mud, and their diet was relatively basic, consisting primarily of grains and vegetables, with meat being more or less of a luxury. Agriculture was still huge, but at this point with employment now becoming the norm, these people were not working on their own farms, they worked on others' farms for a low wage. These impoverished people had long, demanding hours and wore clothes that were rudimentary and coarse. And like I mentioned, with the growth of society came more social status, and unfortunately the poor got the short end of the stick there. The poor had low social status, limited rights, and were often heavily taxed by their local rulers. Now, despite all of the negatives in the life of the poor during the Iron Age, there was still a silver lining. Larger communities meant stronger community ties. There was more tradition that was being shared around, and religious practices also provided hope and support to those who lived these hard lives. You'll notice a trend of the more we see society evolve, we'll also see poverty become more common because people are typically taken out of the self-sustaining lifestyle and put into a lifestyle where their livelihood is based off of working for others. This really makes you think, but I'll share my general consensus at the end of the video. The Middle Ages, or the Medieval Era. By this point, I think it's important we make another note. By modern standards, even the wealthiest of wealthy during the Middle Ages were not living amazing lives. The wealthy did, of course, enjoy better clothing, better housing, more food compared to the poor, but they had nowhere near the modern luxuries that a modern-day homeless person has access to. It's important to note that the Middle Ages was triggered by the fall of Rome, leaving a massive power vacuum and a huge opportunity for new management across all of Europe. And within that, two powers arose, the church and the royal families. I mention this because at the time, the centralization of power was very tight-knit, meaning that if you were not associated with the royal family or the church, your access to wealth was minimal and almost everybody at this time was poor or, in context of the Middle Ages, a surf. And no, not internet surfing or the cool water surfing. No, we're talking about hard manual labor poverty surfing. Not fun. So to answer the question, what was it like to be poor in the Middle Ages? Well, kind of similar to before. You had had limited legal rights, limited access to knowledge, limited freedom, limited resources, your housing was small and pitiful, your meals were barely sufficient, your days consisted of hard manual labor, typically under the threat of violence if performance is subpar, and overall it wasn't a great time. But like every part of history, if you have good friends, it can make a hard time an okay time. And just maybe, even a good time. Yeah, friendship is magic. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know, it would, it would suck to be poor then, for sure. The Early Modern Era As we discussed previously, in the early modern era, wealth was driven by exploration, trade, and colonization. We saw early globalization, economies grow, and we saw the development of the societies that we live in today. Life for the poor didn't shift much except for one interesting opportunity. Like the medieval era, in the early modern era, the poor still lived relatively similarly. Cramped, unsanitary conditions, limited access to proper housing and healthcare, basic diets consisting primarily of bread, grains, and very little meat. Poor people faced grueling, low-paying jobs in agriculture and manual work. Poor people had limited rights and were still taxed heavily. And at this point, still, education was scarce, perpetuating the socioeconomic disadvantages that they experienced. It's hard to do better if you don't know better, or even anything else. But similarly to before, in these hard times, these poor people had their boys, they had their religion, and now they also saw a light at the end of the tunnel. The society that they were living in was growing and expanding to the point where opportunities started to present themselves, and people started to have larger ambitions as they saw opportunities for themselves to level up their position in life and create just a little bit of wealth for themselves to enjoy some sort of modern comfort. Consider this early capitalism. Just picture it. You're hanging out with your boys. You just finished a 12-hour unpaid shift of getting your legs crushed by horses in the cornfields or whatever they did. And you guys are talking about religion and you're hanging out and you're drinking ale. And then all of a sudden one of your buddies says, hey, what if we go on one of these explorations? One of these guys is looking for crewmates on his ship and he wants to go colonize Madagascar. He says he wants to film a movie about talking animals from the zoo. That's what they had back then. At that point, that was a possibility. And, and the riches from that exploration and the profit from that movie, which did do well, could change their lives forever. The modern era and present day. If you want to see poverty in the present day, it's not hard to find. Simply open your phone, go to the camera app, and turn on the forward-facing camera, and there you go. 
you're looking at a poor person. <laughs> Jokes aside, I would be lying if I said that the poverty experienced in the modern era is really much different than any other era. Now, of course, throughout history, access to information, medical care, housing, knowledge, and so many more factors have improved exponentially in the background, and this improvement has affected everybody positively. You know, a rising tide lifts all boats. But the experience that the poor people have had have always been similar. Limited rights, limited knowledge, limited opportunities, low wages, and a subpar experience to say the least. One thing that I want to bring up that I kind of mentioned in the Stone Age is that in the modern day, poverty is really only associated with net worth and money that you have. But if you lived completely off grid, had everything you needed and were self-sustaining, if you could support yourself, eat, live, do what you wanted to do on your own time in your own land and had zero dollars in the bank, would it matter? Would you need that money? Would that monetary wealth mean anything to you? If you think about it, the monetary wealth that we have today only is used as a tool to provide us with the luxuries we need to live. We pay for shelter. We pay for food. We pay for water. We pay for protection. We pay for infrastructure in the form of taxes. Wealth has always been about survival. And the only difference is how survival looks with the development of society. I find it interesting that the introduction of poverty really only came around when we started to stray away from self-sufficiency and living off of the land and being independent as people. Now, I could be missing a ton of context and this isn't necessarily a fact. This is just a theory I've come to as I've been making this video. But I really do find the concept fascinating that if you just live off the land self-sustaining, poverty really doesn't exist because you are forced to live. That is your bio biological makeup. Think about the animal kingdom. There is no such thing as a poor animal. There's no measure of that. There's only an alive or a dead animal. It's interesting. Might be more of a shower or stoner thought, but I think it's kind of interesting to think about. If you haven't seen the being rich in every era video, check it out now. And if you want a quick summary of both videos, just for fun, here's the conclusion that I've come to. Wealth has always been about survival. And as it evolved, it transitioned to also include power. And I would still consider power to be part of survival because not only are you surviving to stay alive, you're also trying to allow your power to survive. And on the other side of the coin, poverty has always been the same. Lack, severe lack, lack of resources, lack of knowledge, lack of tools, lack of skill, lack of rights. But I think what I've learned over this video in the last is that to solve homelessness, what we need to do is give every homeless person access to Minecraft for let's say two weeks. Let them play Minecraft for two weeks and then we'll just say, hey, now do this in real life and you'll be all right. Totally joking, but it's interesting to think that if you just have skills to be self-sustaining and live off land, money has no use. And yes, I know. Well, how are you going to get the land? How do you live off the land if you have no money, you have no land? Well, here's what we'll do. All the homeless people playing Minecraft, we're going to live stream it. And the people that donate that money will go towards buying the land, which we can allow them to plunder and build upon. Maybe not plunder. I think that's the wrong word, but live upon and bask and frolic, you know? Why not? I'm obviously being extremely satirical and homelessness is a very complex issue that deals a lot with drug abuse and mental health, among other factors. But it's just a funny thought. Editors know, but I read the comments. There's just so many timelines going on at once. I made this video as extremely general as possible. This is a trust me bro video, not a documentary. You know what you're watching. Just enjoy and kind of take out what you can. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And like always, trust me bro.